So Coach Greg made a video about me. Again, that's twice now. Well, I get the pass. I'm allowed to call other people manlets as I identify one. And ever so often, I will in fact call someone a black natural athlete. For example, Chris Bumstead. I guess he can't really get enough of my natural black athlete self. We'll touch on this later. Honestly, Greg's 10 to 1 video ratio is what really impresses me. For every one video I put out, he has 10 on the same subject, all talking about the same things. And it's safe to say that the man's video output is higher than my repetition ranges on arm day. Instead of sticking to one take, Greg is busy screaming 10 different versions of the same thing, using his artificially high and rather loud voice. I often ask myself when watching a Greg video, why is this man screaming at me? And he also says that I make tons of videos about him, and I've only ever made one on the channel, this will be number two, and by Greg's logic, he must have a PhD in over-exaggerating because I have absolutely not talked about him everywhere on this channel. And so Coach Colton, who's essentially a carbon copy of Coach Greg, except he identifies as a black natural athlete, just like Chris Bump said, without being the black or the natural. Well, he makes video after video after video highlighting Coach Greg. Here's the thing, Greg mentions that I'm a black natural athlete, and little does he know I actually am a natural black athlete. In fact, that's why I get all these tattoos. I'm just trying to darken my skin, I guess. Maybe I should up my ink game to let Greg know a little bit better. But let's move to the main point of the video because I do think it is super important to talk about. And no, the video wasn't just about me, it was supposed to be about Jeff Nippert. In which, Coach obviously says, no one has ever thought about doing this before, sarcastically. Channel. And so in today's video, it's a good one. No one had ever thought of doing this before. It's a natty or not on none other than... Well, of course, you guessed it, it's Jeff Nippert. Well, of course they have. It's a highly contentious topic. That is why I covered it. The posts that I shared and was talking about in that video were new posts. And in those posts, no one was believing that he was natural. Everyone thought Jeff was taking steroids. And just this fact alone implies that Greg, while you have similar opinions to me, your videos are not as ubiquitous as it might seem. Because thousands if not millions of people have yet to see your video and still share very unfriendly thoughts of Jeff, and I'm trying to set the record straight. If you look at the comments in both my video on Jeff and yours, even though we both said that he was natural, which I think you and I have more in common than you might think, he still got so much hate in the comments of those videos, people saying that he's a complete fan. Like Natty, and we're just on his side. And just to be very clear about this, and I know I've said it, but this video I was making was not insulting Jeff, in which Greg's video tried to paint me as someone insulting Jeff. I was quite literally making an entire video explaining why Jeff is a natural athlete and has always been a bodybuilder who is natural. And talk about the science to yap a lot, and every one of Coach Greg's haters gonna come and flock to his channel. And yeah, sure, I talk about science a lot and I talk more than you might talk. I love yapping and I love talking about the nuance because that's what makes things interesting to me on YouTube and other platforms. In my mind, at least, I think many people on social media are all a bit too shallow and honestly brain fucked from all the brain rot on social media. It is the Mr. Beast era of social content creation, and it has shown in the demographics that watch the content. The respect comes from virality in terms of you being crazy and psychopathic versus you having really foundationally good things to say and then supporting those beliefs in some sort of actual articulate way. What I do, whether you think it's wrong or right, and whether it actually is wrong or right, is what I like to do. Provide my insight. Because like Coach Greg, I competed naturally and won my PNBA Pro card as a natural athlete before competing in NPC shows and then went on to compete in the NPC division many times. Now, I haven't won my IFBB Pro card like Greg because I have cerebral palsy. It's a very significant disability which disenables me to build a physique like many other people no matter how many steroids I would like to take. So what I've done is really bled my usefulness into coaching and have become a very successful coach, something that Coach Reg has also done, and also become very tightly knit with a group of amazing intellectuals that share knowledge and keep me up to my toes. They push me to be better every single day. So yeah, I have words that I think matter, and I like to talk about stuff. So dare I share them? 
basically, fuck yeah, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether 100 people see these videos or 10 million. I enjoy doing it because it's what I love to do and it brings me happiness to share my thoughts to people in any kind of expertise that I can provide. I want people to get more out of their entertainment, period, instead of just yelling and screaming and making fun of other people, specifically underaged people, military veterans, disabled people, I mean, you name it, Greg's made fun of them. Coach Greg has defended him in every single video I've said he's natural. I've never in any video said that Jeff Nippert is on performance enhancing drugs of any kind, not even recreational drugs or drugs of any kind. And again, like I said, I think Greg and I actually have more in common than he thinks because many of his opinions I do share to include that Jeff was natural. Even in the face of a lot of people telling me that he is absolutely not natural and he is lying. And what I don't understand is he's mad about me saying that because Jeff has never taken a drug in his life that is somehow an insult in that i was calling him not cool why he is natural and why specifically jeff nippert has probably never taken a single drug in his life is that in fact a compliment if you tell somebody you look like somebody that's never done any drugs ever are you saying he's a nerd that he's perhaps not cool that he's not doing the m he's not partying with togi greg goddamn do like how is this me i'm just unsure how this is me being rude i said he has great genetics a great physique an amazing lifetime of training he's done some pretty incredible things and hasn't taken drugs to do those things to me that is not an insult but it doesn't stop there because he continues to keep contradicting himself harder than last time. Greg uses my points that I made in the video as well and also takes the clips that I gathered in my video as well to generate his own points which were identical to mine. Building champion, both of them. Remind you of anyone? It kind of seems like a shorter version of Coach Greg. And if you look at his parents, parents are jacked. Mom and dad, stronger and better built than friggin' last time. Compare Jeff's parents to mine, you're thinking, how did Coach Greg build any muscle? So my other point is that he's got a family line of this freaks. Yes, they're all short and smaller people, but they're jacked nonetheless, and that really does a man some favors when he's trying to build some muscle, even if you're natural. Which editorializes his statements and voids out mine, so it makes him sound like the subject matter expert, and the meanwhile making fun of me and not showing the video that I had to share with people in this specifically targeting statements that he didn't agree with in which I said, but not talking about the things that he did agree with in which I said. Five foot nine. They simply lie. Most men who are shorter add a couple inches, not to the downstairs, but to their height. And why do you- Interesting that he states short men add a couple inches down below the waistline as a joke, but it's actually really interesting to talk about because, well, Greg, we've talked about you a while back and your fascination with pointing out young individuals' genitalia. Been rumored to be somewhere around 135 to 145 pounds. And so, yes, 143 pounds is somewhere between 135 and 145 pounds. You really have to understand how small of a person that is. Like, that, that is the size of most female bodies. Most female bodies, perhaps in other countries, but in North America, 135 to 145 pounds. That's not the average female. The average female's fat. And so, so sure, I guess my statement was wrong on females because I didn't do a quick Google search like Greg did, and that makes him, again, an expert compared to me somehow because he went to school in 1895. And yeah, he's right. Women on average in the United States definitely weigh more than 135 pounds. Sure, because most of them majoritively are obese. What I am talking about in the demographic in that video very clearly is women in the fitness industry, women who actually take care of their bodies. It's more likely that a woman who is healthy and very fit in her 20s is somewhere around 120 to 140 pounds, generically speaking. Because ultimately, that's what you see. Look up any bikini athlete, and I coach plenty of them, and I get to see their weights, thankfully, and I kind of know they're generally around 120 to 140 pounds. So sure, it's not exact science, but it is also practical application of what I've experienced, in which I state very clearly, I am here to share my expertise in opinion which has been developed by the things that i do not quick google searches hoping colton you need to touch grass you have small looking arms because your arms are small it's not because their arms are so long and the muscle is stretched out longer and it looks flat it's because you're not jacked 
we're at the infamous small arm comment, which I think is just super fascinating as an argument. As before, he states that genetics make the physique in this same video. Yet he also tells me that I don't work hard enough to get bigger arms. Look, I, I don't have the biggest arms in the world. My goal isn't to be the biggest human being in the world, nor to have the biggest arms ever. He compares me to Andrew Jack, who is very, very likely taking astronomically higher doses of gear than I would ever take. And he's also twice my fucking age, whilst also being one of the most genetically gifted bodybuilders we have ever seen in all of time. That is my opinion, but hey, I'm flattered to be compared to someone like him. But his opinion is a little odd, because I think the age of bodybuilders does really matter when you're trying to talk about whether height or being short is more important to bodybuilding. If you look at shorter bodybuilders, they generally reach their peak physique much younger than do the tall bodybuilders who reach their peak physique. If you look at the shorter bodybuilders, they have amazing careers in their 30s to late 20s. Andrew Jack is 40 years old. Derek Lunsford, on the other hand, another short guy just like Greg, is only 31, and he just just turned 31. Nick Walker, another short guy, is 30 years old, and he just turned 30 years old. Brandon Curry, a tall guy at six foot tall, is 43 years old. Do you see what I'm saying? Then this statement transforms even further into Thor being 400 pounds, so I'm inherently wrong about my statement. I think most people would look at Thor and realize at his peak physique, he was fucking massive. Yeah, he was almost 400 pounds and sustained at a 400 pound weight for some time. Yet he doesn't have round muscles. He's big, but he doesn't look like a bodybuilder. He doesn't have bubbly shoulders or a big chest or really impressive quads. He doesn't look like someone who thinks of an aesthetic physique like Chris Bumstead would look. Just because he's tall, strong, and weighs more doesn't mean it's proving your point. The reality is, is if we took Thor and put 400 pounds onto someone that's Greg's size, that person would look like an absolute human mutant. Then he also talks about Phil Heath now being the exception to my statement as well, which also doesn't make sense. Because not only is Phil Heath one of the most gifted, genetically speaking, athletes of all time in bodybuilding, but he's also only five foot nine inches, just barely. Now I know to the short king himself, that might seem pretty tall, but it's really not if you're someone at or above six feet tall. And while sure, his point about Ronnie Coleman might be a little bit more accurate because he was 5'11". He's also the king of fucking bodybuilding. He is the one guy that everyone knows is the best bodybuilder of all time, period, full stop, no argument. So using him as your selection bias is absolutely wild. His inclusionary criteria is insane. He is the outlier by far in your data and you should just cut him off and consider more of the generic population at the base level. So at the end of the day, I love Greg and as of late his comedy has been absolutely peaked. His inappropriate jokes are great. And I have no issue with him making videos about me. In fact, I kind of like it because it's funny to watch people talking about me in a certain capacity. And it really doesn't bother me compared to what other people like to think in the comments section. In the video I made about Greg a while back, I talked about everything that Greg had done, the bad and the good, but I also talked about at the end of that video something really important, which is I think that most people would agree if that that Greg could go back to the way that he was when he first started producing YouTube content, everyone would find him a little bit more tolerable and he could still add in the jabs and the jokes, but just be more of a, well, natural person. But I hope Greg the best on his trip to China and Japan. I'll be going there at the beginning of next year, which I'm super psyched for. And if you're interested in my content, I do recommend that you pop a subscribe. It does help me out a lot. It's free to you and it builds our community, which is in fact not a community built around hating Greg Doucette, even though I know he would like to make it all about himself. Unfortunately, it could never be that. In fact, it is so much more. And I think we all can agree that we strive for greatness here. And that's it, folks.